Good morning, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Um, so as long as nobody complains, I assume uh, everything is all right. I uh, hope you can see my screen and I hope the, the audio quality is uh, working as well. Um, so let's get started. So my name is Niels. Uh, I work as a data analyst consultant um, in the UK, in London. Um, I joined the data school about one and a half years ago, and at the moment I work um, yeah, as a data analyst consultant with Tableau and Altrix for different clients in London. Um, and today I'm going to give you a brief introduction about uh, parameter actions. Um, so the way the webinar is uh, structured, I have already pre-prepared a couple of use cases for parameters, um, and I will show them at first. So I've created different sheets and different dashboards which showcase different examples. Then afterwards, I'm going to show you how I build them. Um, at first, here I've got a brief overview of what kind of questions often pop up or what often is associated with, pro with parameter actions. Uh, the, first, um, the first point being, um, yeah, what do they actually do and what is the change? Because parameters have been around for, for quite some time. Uh, people have been using them um, yeah, for uh, different versions now. Uh, but before, those were always used as drop downs. So you would create a parameter, and then you would change the value of this parameter based on this drop down menu. So now you can, the difference now is action is you can click on the data point in your visualization then the value inside this, uh, this drop-down menu is going to be changed depending on your selection. Um, then what often uh, comes up is how are the different two to sets and how are the different two to set actions. So hence the second point, similar to set actions, same, same, but different. Um, so there are some, some differences. So for example, you can um, add multiple values to a set. For a parameter, you can always just select one value. Um, so for some cases, set actions are actually more useful because you can add multiple data points to a set. Um, then advantages for parameters would be that I think they're just more commonly used. A lot of people are more familiar with parameters than they are with sets. And uh, you, uh, the main advantage being is um, you can use some across different um, data sources. So as I said, you can only use the set on the data source um, where you have created it, but uh, a parameter you can uh, refer to across different data sources. Uh, which then brings me to the last point. So parameter actions are really good to create your own user interface because you can then just add another data source um, to your workbook. And then um, you can use those new values from the new data source to uh, create your own user menu or your own user interface. Um, so I've got a couple of examples which show this. So I think it's just easier to understand if, if I really give examples. So let's get started. Um, I don't know how many examples I can show you, but let's see, I've prepared nine different ones. Um, so that's the first one. So I've created a a simple dashboard, and uh, so this shows uh, subcategories over time. Uh, this is from the Superstore, uh, from the Superstore data set, and um, this is one example parameters. The, so the parameters here on the right side, you have your, your, your drop-down menu for the different subcategories. Then what people often use parameters for is to highlight a specific data point uh, on your visualization. So now I can change the value inside this parameter and the respective subcategory is being highlighted. Uh, so the difference now being with parameter actions is I don't have to use this drop down menu here, but I can just click on the line. So this is the subcategory phones and click on it. And then it updates the value inside 
this drop-down menu, right? So go back to copiers, copiers being updated. So instead of selecting the value in this menu here, I just click on the specific data point, and then it updates the set category for this data point. Okay, so how did I build this? Um, let's just go in here real quick. So I had sales. Order date, it was by months. There it is. Then I have subcategory. I'm going to put it on, on detail. So the advantage of using the, the parameter basically is that if you put it on, on color, it's very, very cluttered and it makes it really tough to compare one category against the other because, yeah, some of the colors are actually quite similar and so on. So um, you can put um, it on to detail and then create the parameter. This is based on subcategory. You create your subcategory parameter. Um, just going to leave it like this, the name subcategory parameter true. And now you see inside these parameters, we have all our different subcategories. Okay, now the parameter um, has been created. Yeah, one second, so let me show it. Okay, so here it is. And now I just need to create a calculated field where I refer to the subcategory parameter. So um, if the value inside the subcategory parameter, so at the moment this is um, accessories, if this equals the value in our data stock, so if this equals the subcategory, uh, then this is going to be true. This is just a, just a Boolean which will return true or false. So we call this highlight subcategory. Okay. So this is a Boolean, true or false. I'm going to put this onto, onto color. So at the moment, accessories is highlighted. So nothing new here at this stage, just the usual uh, parameter. And uh, let me also show the legend for this one. Put it. Uh, put true above files, so true is actually easier to see. Um, then we also want to put it on size, right? Uh, but yeah, I'm using the way. But it be worth it. Okay, so this is kind of what we had in our first visualization, right? Uh, and now we want to set up the the action. So at the moment I'm in a worksheet, so I create a worksheet action. I add an action which uh, is called change parameter. So we want to change the value inside the parameter based on our action. Um, so I probably should have named this sheet, but our new sheet is sheet 19. And then we select the subcategory parameter which I just created. So this one is the subcategory parameter from the first example I did. Before, this is a new one I just created, so particularly for um, parameter two. And then we want to update the subcategory value. So this is the value, um, which the new value which we want to have inside our parameter. We want to have the new subcategory based on our. So this is just a string, so no need to, to navigate. Um, okay. And now when I click on it, it changes the value accordingly. Copy this, the subcategory forms, the subcategory, and so on. Uh, yeah, so this is just a really simple example, I think, which demonstrates quite good how uh, parameter actions work. So, this was my first dashboard. Um, another example I have created here is um, a parameter um, hover action. So, sometimes you maybe you don't want to use an axis for your visualization because it takes up too much space or it doesn't look as clean or for whatever reason. So um, in this case, we just hover over one of those bar charts and then they, they will be labeled. Um, so um, yeah, so it just makes it look so it's, yeah, a bit cleaner and uh, it's a bit more interactive. Um, so how did I build this? Let's create another worksheet. This time I'm going to name it um, the 
this was. Okay, so I think I had state in there, right? And then I had states again. Okay, sorted. Okay, and then um, you just want to have the states value for the selected state. This means you need to create a parameter for state. Parameter. Um, so it's going to be our state parameter too. Again, quite similar. We now have all of our state values in there. And then so this time it's a bit different. This time we actually need to create an if statement. So if state parameter two equals um, the state value in our data set, um, then we want to return the sales value. And else, so we don't need to create an else statement because all the other values are just going to be null automatically. So we don't want to show any other states they use if the parameter doesn't equal state. Uh, so this is going to be uh, a highlight. And then I just put this on later. Okay. So again, maybe it's again a bit easier to understand if I actually show the parameter, so this already works. Uh, well, it shouldn't be subcategory, it should be state, right? Uh, state parameter. Okay. Um, so yeah, so this already then works with our drop down, but again, we want to use um, the actions. So then again, I create a parameter action, change the value of the parameter. So this was um, state, state parameter. Again, this time we want to update this. You don't need an aggregation. And okay. And all right, so I think this time we want to hover, right? So we don't want to select, we want to hover over the data point and then and update. So and then we don't need the access anymore. And then I mean we can do some some formatting. So uh, probably just ten thousands. We don't need any decimal points. And it's a bit tough to read if it's if it's vertical. So alignment. So it should be just like this, right? Yes. Okay. So this looks a lot cleaner and nicer. And it just disappeared for some reason. Yeah. Ah, there it is. Okay. Um, yeah, so this is our um, state example, state parameter. Um, I've got another example here. So this is a bit more advanced. Um, what we see here is a, is a scatter plot for profit and sales. And each data point is the product ID. And um, when you hover over one of those data points, so one of those product IDs, uh, it highlights the corresponding subcategory. So for this product ID, um, this is a subcategory uh, chess. So now all of those orange data points are inside the subcategory chess. So it makes it a bit easier in the scatter plot to compare uh, subcategories against each other. Um, so I don't know, so for example, this one here, Binder, so it's just one outlier up here, but actually inside the subcategories, a lot of the other product IDs there down here. Um, so um, yeah, let's build this. So let's see. Um, let me find subcategory. Yeah. Okay. So we had profit and we had sales. Okay. Uh, and then we had our product ID, right? And I think it was actually it was, was it? Yeah. And so it's an outline. I'm just going to exclude this one. Okay. Um, yeah. 
So this kind of already looks like it. And um, okay, so now we want to again change the value of the subcategory, right? So if I have it on the data point, we want our parameter to take on the value of the subcategory. So this means we need to create another parameter again for subcategory. Okay. And um, then okay, so it's just already put the subcategory inside the view here. And then we need to create a, a calculated field. So then we just say so we just create a list uh, in a statement. So if Subcategory three equals the subcategory. Um, I think it's probably, it's probably maybe you don't even need a, a statement. Let's see. Um, so then we call this highlight subcategory. Branch of parts. Okay, so then we already have the same. Uh, so this is not the moment hidden. So let's again move, move this one up. So this already looks a bit nicer. And then um, just to uh, make it a bit easier to see, to see the difference, you can just say true. You want to have the pulp as a bit in circle. And then from the fonts. Okay, um, maybe you make them a bit larger. Very large. Okay, so this already works quite quite fine, right? So now we just need to set up our parameter action. Um, Again, we want to change the parameter, the styles are subcategory three. And then um, we want to change the value of, um, da, da, da. we don't want to change the value of the product ID, do we? we want to change the value of the subcategory. Um, uh, Ah, I didn't put the second in there. Well, that makes sense. So we want to say change parameter based on subcategory. Yeah. Um, and then, so I think this was again not a select action, but a hover action. Accessories, chairs, and so on. So we had this outline up here before. As well. um, yeah. So another example of um, yeah how um, how parameter action make it a bit easier to compare values inside your visualization. Okay. Um, let's go to the next example. So this one. So as you maybe have noticed before, every time we uh, set up the parameter action, we didn't use an aggregation. This was because I always used uh, string values. So here's an example how you can add numbers to a parameter. So here you see the parameter on the right side. This is our sales parameter. And this one shows um, sales over time. And depending on which data point you hover over, um, it highlights um, the months which are above in sales for this data point. So this one is the lowest, it's, it seems like. So it highlights all other months. And then when I go to the highest months for sales, none of the other ones are highlighted. So then when you just go across this line to see how all the different data points um, are being highlighted, which are above in sales in comparison to this specific uh, this respective data point. Uh, so yeah, it just makes it a bit easier to compare the different ones against each other. Uh, okay, 
So let's build this again. Um, yeah. So let's see in our sheet. Uh, say it's, uh, okay. So say it's this time. Okay. Um, and now we need to create a dual axis and we need to create our, our calculated field. But um, at first we need to create our parameter. So this time we want to update the sales value inside the parameter, right? So now actually I think I'm just going to go in here and say create parameter. And this time, yeah, the float is fine. And we can uh, select the default value, which the parameter should take on uh, at first. So one uh, is probably not a good idea because the least amount of sales is something about five, five K, I think, around here. So I don't know, let's just say five, five thousand, like that. Okay. Uh, so now we already have our size parameter. Did I name it? Probably not. There it is, parameter three. That's not very intuitive. So, call it size parameter. That's a lot better. There it is. Okay, cool. So then I can create a calculated field. So I want to check if Sales, sales, some of sales are above um, the sales parameter. Um, and if that is the case, then I want to return uh, the sum of sales because then the point is going to sit then on this uh, number for the sum of sales. So, um, don't say it's and otherwise I don't want to return any other value. Okay, uh, so what's this? Is this uh, it's current? Uh, so I've got my above states calc. I'm gonna put on my dual axis and I already have my size parameter, so now this should basically already work. So when I Put in 20k to see how those values are not being returned, which are below 20k. Um, so then I can already change this into a circle. And yeah, so basically it already works as a, a drop down uh, parameter. Or I mean, this not a drop down, but uh, so just with this text box basically. Um, so now we want to make it actionable and a bit more, more user friendly, right? Uh, so let's just finish off uh, creating this visualization. Uh, so I created dual axis, synchronize my axis. Uh, yeah, I always create some meta names when I do the dual axis. I'm just going to get rid of it, make some nice colors. So I want to pop it out. So, uh, so this is why I choose red. I want to hide those null values because those are the values which um, basically are being filtered out by the, by the parameter. Uh, rid of this header here probably on the right side. And now I just want to um, set up the action. So I'm going to say change parameter. This is going to be my uh, sales parameter. i find it here. And this time, so I want to take not the months, I want the sum of sales and I want to aggregate it based on the order date. So I want to aggregate by month. And then I don't want to select again. I want to select this. I want to have one. Okay. So now, yeah, so now it updates the sales parameter accordingly. So this already looks pretty neat. Yeah, so it seems to be working. It highlights. Um, all the months which are above and say it's for this respective data point. So I think it's quite, quite handy. Yeah. Cool. Um, then let's
let's go to the next example. So this one um, is, a, is a drill down example. So it's quite different. So you can change your level of detail inside your visualization with parameter actions. So when I on office supplies, I drill down one uh, level um, further. So then I see the subcategories inside office supplies. Then I see so um, which subcategory makes up the largest proportion inside office supplies. So here it's um, storage technology, it's uh, phones. So if I want to discover uh, more of uh, the, the underlying data, it's actually quite nice to just drill down into, into deeper levels. Um, so this would also be possible with set actions. The pro actually, the set action would probably be, uh, work better because the problem with, pro uh, with parameter actions is you cannot clear them. So with set actions, you can uh, say clear all values from set, and then you could return to the prior state. So now at the moment, there wouldn't um, with parameter actions, there is no default way of uh, returning to just categories for all of those three bars. So one bar would always be drilled down. This is why you have the none here, uh, where you have the, the none button. So you need to add a you need to add another button to uh, come back to the prior state. Um, and this is where we are already starting to build kind of our own user interface. So I mean, you could argue that it's more intuitive for for beginners. So if you have a button here, it makes it easy that you can clear your selection. Some people might not know how to clear sets and so on. So uh, depending on your audience, maybe it's actually more intuitive to have those buttons in there. Um, but um, yeah, so um, this is my drill down example, the drill down bar chart. And um, let's build this. Drill down bar. Okay, so this should be quite straightforward, I hope. So uh, I have categories here. Okay. And um, then I create my, my parameter. Okay, so these are my values, my categories. Okay, cool. And so now I create my, my calculated field. So then I say, uh, if category parameter equals uh, the category in my data source, so if the value in the parameter equals this value basically, so if furniture is furniture, then I want it to be down, right? So then I want to go one level deeper down. So then I want to return the subcategory. Uh, and then else, I want um, the category to be returned. So the other values shouldn't change. So this one should belong to this furniture. So this should be one level drilled down. And the other ones should stay at the category level. So category. Okay, so then uh, category. Uh, category card. Okay. And then I just put this on color. Okay. So this is already again works here. Um but then I forgot something because, as I just mentioned, um, I cannot clear the selection. So what I need to do is actually I need to add another option here. Yes, I need to add another option, none. And here, because then when I select none, it just returns to the default state. Um, okay, so this is our little trick then how we are gonna um, go back into our um, yeah into the main three three categories. 
Uh, okay, so then for this, I will need to create a dashboard. Uh, so I have my grid on bar in here. Okay. And then I need to create my button. So I will create my run button. And this is just going to be the early now. Uh, okay. Then I'm just gonna put this on text and make this shape. Right here. Okay, so here I've got my neat little circle. I'm just gonna center it. Okay, so here I already have what I want to turn this into. Uh, my neat little uh, non button, which I can then floating here. Okay. There it is. And um, then I need to set up my actions, right? So let's do one after another. So the first action is going to be the action where I drill down. So this is going to be my category parameter action where I'm going to update um, the category. So see here. Um, wait. Oh wait, it's a different different parameter. So let's just go back here. Interesting. Because it works in here. Oh. Ah, <laughs> hmm. oh, did I say worksheet? Did I see a worksheet action? I think I did. Um, so what I want. Okay, so then I need to create a dashboard action. So it should be good to this. Okay. Yeah, I think I created a worksheet action, right? This is not what I want. Okay, so now um, this is the subcategory uh, drill down. Cool, it's already uh, working. Um, and then uh, I need to just create the secure button. Uh, I need to create the, the action for it. So um, I create a default action. So this one. And say change parameter now, and I create now another, that I should probably rename my sheet. Uh, for this, wait, what happened? Uh, rename for this. Um, And then say um, da, 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 actions, add another action, change parameter. Then we create another action from this non button one. And then um, we just uh, target again our category parameter two. And we take the value from the non button, which is always going to be non. And since we have the non inside our category parameter two, um, it's, it's gonna then take, it's gonna populate our parameter two, category parameter two with this non value. Then this is gonna give us our default state again. Um, yeah, so this is not working, so uh, that's good. Cool. And, um, so this, yeah, basically already starts a bit going into this creating your user interface direction with parameters, um, which is then taking a bit further with this example. 
um, where you create a, a shard swap with buttons. Um, so again, this was possible before as well, but you would have to use uh, the drop down. Um, but it comes up quite frequently that I don't know, maybe different stakeholders, they prefer different charts and so on. We can't agree on one way to, um, to show the data. So it is requested quite, quite frequently to have the option to swap between different sheets and to have a nice user interface, which allows you then to, to do this and makes it a bit easier for the end user is quite handy, I think. So um, it's going to be an interesting one to build. Uh, let's see. So here we have the stack chart again, bar chart. Okay, so how do we do this? So this is the first time we would have to add another data source then uh, to our um, to our workbook. Um, because at the moment we don't have any values that parameter could refer to. So um, we need to create um, another Excel spreadsheet. Um, so let me just start. So I will add this data source, this Excel spreadsheet to our existing Superstore data source. And then we can leverage this data source um, to create values which we can then refer to in our uh, sheet swap uh, Dashboard. So it sounds a bit complicated, so I'm, I'm just going to do it. So uh, as a chart, uh, right? So we have the uh, bar chart, and then we have the chart. Okay, so this is just, it's already going to be our, our data source. So we just save it. Uh, this is going to be the user interface. Okay, cool. Uh, let's create another uh, worksheet. This is gonna be then. Yeah, okay. So here I'm just gonna start um, adding our new data source. It's gonna be an Excel spreadsheet. Use interface one. There it is. Cool. And so this is then gonna be our our legend. So. Now I've got my two values in here, right? Put the bar chart and the stack area chart. And I can refer to them with my uh, different shapes. So put the bar chart, this one, and the stack chart. So this is just, just different icons you can download. Uh, so there they are. Cool. Um, so this is already the legend which I've built. So let's just name this. Um, so uh, chart. And then I just need to build the two different charts as well. So now I walk back to my Superstore data source and create the uh, stacked area chart. So this is going to be again order date. All of it, all of it per month. And I think I can we use the sub category a lot of times. So, uh, stack chart, right? So, that's my stack chart. Stack chart, okay. And then I just create my, my bar chart. Okay, that is rename. Okay, the way I'm going to build this now is first I'm going to use the, the parameter drop down and then create the action afterwards to show the difference. So let's see. Um, so the way you build those uh, chart swaps is um, you create a dashboard, you uh, drop container in. And then um, drop both of those sheets into the container. So they both need to be in the same container. So this is the stack chart and then the legend. So the way you know it's in the same container is when this gray 
box is highlighted here on the bottom. So now it's in there. Oh wait, so I just said I had so I want I want to see Archer. Okay, so now the Archer is in is in here as well. So you can check if they're in the same container by saying select layout container. So now the outer container is highlighted in blue. So you see they're both in the same one. Um, okay, so now this is where the fun happens. Um, now we need to create a filter. So basically, we want to say if the parameter um, equals bar chart, right, then we only want to see the bar chart. So this means we are filtering on on this value. So we are creating um, a parameter for the chart. A parameter, chart parameter too. Let's find this one. Go back to the superstore. And then we just say, this is basically coming back to what I mentioned in the beginning that you can uh, use uh, parameters across different data sources. So now this parameter will be available in my superstore data set, even though it comes from a different data source. So chart parameter two is just in here. And then I say, so if chart parameter two um, equals uh, bar chart, then it is bar, uh, and it's going to be a uh, stack, right? So then swap, it's going to be my filter. Okay. Good, I think we're getting there. So, um, okay, so uh, let me uh, show the filter as well. Sharp parameter. Okay, so at the moment it's at the bar chart. So let's go to the bar chart. And then put an also maybe call it filter right at the beginning. Put filter. Okay, so we only want to show the chart if the parameter uh, says bar chart. So we only want to show it here. So okay. So now let me show chart parameter bar chart. Now when I move to sec chart, it's gone. That's what we want. So uh, now I actually change it to stack chart. Go into the check uh, stack chart, do the same thing, just with uh, stack. Okay. Uh, and now this one disappears. Cool. Uh, so now it's gone to the dashboard. Sorry, it looks good. Um, so let's just demonstrate how it's already should work now with my uh, chart parameter. Ta-da, okay, cool. Um, this already works. And now I just drag in my legend. Yeah, I like it flowing again, I think. Okay, so now just gonna, like this, I'm just gonna put it, put it in here. And then we create our dashboard action for the legend. Then we say, um, so for the left, for this one. Um, so if you click on the legend, you wanna update the um, chart parameter to And it works. So again, maybe this was a bit quick. So maybe let's go ahead. I'm a bit excited here. Okay. So um, when so this is a legend chart, right? Um, so when we click on um, so the target target parameter is clear. So this is a parameter which has the two values of our chart types in the so bar chart and and sec chart. Um, so this is a parameter we want to update, right? And we updated it, it with the value which is in here. So it's already when I have over it, it already says. So we updated with the value bar chart, right? So now the parameter is bar chart. Now it is step chart. And 
this value stack chart is now inside our filter. And since it is inside our filter, it shows the visualization and it's not in the bar chart filter. So it shows stack, but we don't want to show stack, we want to show bar. So this is why it's, why it's blank. Uh, yeah, so I mean, it com combines more than one topic, so it combines parameter actions and, uh, coll and collapsing containers as well. Uh, so. Uh, okay, so um, let's see if we can do all of those examples. Um, uh, so we have the, the the color picker as well. So sometimes maybe you just want to give your user more um, yeah more freedom to interact with your visualization. So you could change the background color. You could change with this one as well. You could change. Um, the colors of your stack area chart, the color of your line chart, and, and so on. So again, you have like a nice the user interface on the side. And um, with this user can interact and has more freedom inside your, video, inside your visualization. Um, so let's build this real quick. So I'm not going to create one with so many different colors. I'm just, for the example, I'm just going to create one with um, so dark. Uh, okay, close it. Uh, I'm just going to create one with uh, four, four different colors. Um, Accident, let me down. Okay, so we're in the UK, so colors like this. Uh, so, so nice colors like green, yellow, blue, and red. Uh, okay. So we are colors. So again, we are creating for our user interface another uh, data source which we then uh, bringing in. Um, so let's do this. Again, we have another data source from Excel. These are our colors. Uh, okay, let's name this. Uh, it's going to be background. Colors, bring it in here. Have you? Okay, so let's make some maximum size. So at the moment we have all our different colors in, in here, right? Uh, but we um, so I think at first we should assign the green colors in blue. Yes, it's fine, but it's still no green, red, yellow, like this. So this makes more sense now. And then we just want to create a filter where based on the selection in your parameter in your parameter you show the correct color right so we create a parameter again this time based on, on colors uh color parameter uh, okay and then um again so with this neat little trick I can just say if the value inside our parameter equals the actual color. So this is filter a color. So if I select the in parameter blue, return blue from color and so on. So I only want the true statement. Okay. Or it's going to be our nice background color. So again, maybe to demonstrate, this should already work with our, our drop-down menu. Green, this looks pretty green. Red, yes. So this already makes sense. Um, and then I just need to create a dashboard. Uh, I drop it in. Let's get rid of all the different legends. Okay. So this is going to be well, to, to probably be deactivated here. And um, now I just need to create my legend. So for this, I just put on color again and then create a nice little pie chart. Uh, so here, make it look a bit nice. Let's 
this is going to be our color legend. Okay, so the color legend is going to put in here. All right. There it is. Uh, so luckily, we already have transparent sheets, right? Because otherwise, uh, this really wouldn't look nice. Uh, so we want to change the shading. Yep. Okay. It's not better. Okay. So now we just set up our, our parameter. Um, change parameter. So it's base. The source is from uh, agent. Uh, so it should be our first parameter one, which we just it, and we want to update the value color. And we want to make it a hover. Okay, so uh, I think pretty straightforward. Um, yeah, you just update the value inside the, the parameter. So now it's green, and if green, then the value inside the parameter matches value uh, of the new data source of color that it just updates accordingly. Uh, so we're coming already close to the end. Um, so let's try to wrap this up. So I've got another example, um, but I think it's going to take too long to build. So I'm, I'm just going to just going to show it to you and explain how it works and then just go through the credits and um, do a quick uh, peek on what's going to ha happen in the next webinar. Uh, so this one, again, we have our user interface, which I created with an additional data source in Excel. So I just created another data source, uh, city and um, where we can uh, swap between city and state, and created this user interface with it. And um, now, when you click on city, um, it changes. So it's Changes the level of detail. So it's again, it's a little bit like this drill down example which I showed before, um, but well, it works a bit different. So this, I mean, the use cases. I mean, for example, this one here for New York. I mean, it basically blocks the whole East Coast, right? So um, you can't really see anything underneath this bubble, right? So it is kind of nice to have the option to just remove the city sales and just look at the profit by state in here. Um, so um, yeah, so it's basically just another if statement where based on the parameter you've selected. So if, if it is city, then uh, return the cities. If not, then um, leave it as it is basically. This is, this is what, it, what it is, is, is behind it. Uh, but yeah, I think quite quite neat. And again, yeah, just simple examples, but the way a, a parameter actions can be used is that you are just not creating like a standalone one size fits all version of your dashboard that you can give a lot of um, yeah, additional um, yeah, additional um, options and, and, and functions for your, for your user to actually change the dashboard in a way they would they want to have it. Um, okay, so I'm not going to build this one because it's going to take too long. Um, so I'm going to go through the credits. Uh, yeah, so the, most of the examples were taken from a blog from Kevin uh, uh, Lelage, I hope. It's called, so this is uh, the name of his blog, playing with parameter actions in Tableau. Uh, also included uh, our blog from the data school. So this is from Jenny. She brought a quick um, introduction to parameter actions. So I think these are just like really simple, simple examples. But if you want to read up on it again, so this is where you could go. And then um, going to go to the next webinars. The next webinar is going to be about the new Tableau release 2019.3. And for this, I'm going to start um, a quick poll um, about who's, who's interested in, in attending, so I'm just going to go to lunch now. Uh, please, please vote. Um, so what's going to happen in this webinar? Uh, it's going to talk about the new features in Tableau. So um, 
there's going to be this, I think it's quite a big change, explain data. So it's a new AI powered feature, uh, which helps you all to understand your data a bit better. Um, and um, yeah, it gives you a better understanding of, of your outliers, the shape of your data, and so on. So I think it's probably going to be a quite new uh, and exciting feature. Um, Tableau Prep is going to get an update as well, so you're going to be able to run scripts from it, Python and, uh, and, and R scripts, so for the coders, uh, coders under you, underneath you, uh, this is going to be exciting. Um, and then Tableau Server, uh, encryption of extracts, uh, yeah, so I guess people ask for that. Um, this is going to be a new feature and a revised license management. Um, yeah, so looks like a pretty cool webinar. Um, and yeah, I think that's it from my side. Please, please vote. At the moment we are at 78, 78%. Quite a good turnout. And uh, yeah, I'm just gonna let this vote run. And uh, yeah. Thanks a lot. I hope you enjoyed this webinar. Um, so I think parameter actions, yeah, they're really useful if you if you play around with it. And um, yeah, they're quite fun. So have fun exploring there. Okay. All right. So I think I'm going to close the poll. And yeah. Thanks a lot for, for joining and have a have a good day everybody. Thanks.